the data view plugin has many features that are way, way beyond my capabilities, but it also has a basic settings that you can use to improve how you manage the information you have in Obsidian. Uh, in my last video, I showed a list. I created a list, but I didn't tell you how I did it. I used the DataView plugin, and that inspired me to create a series of videos explaining the DataView plugin for non-developers. So don't expect uh, super elaborated settings here. My goal with this videos is to show you that regular users can also take advantage of the data view plugin. And today we are starting with lists. The first thing to do, of course, is install the data view plugin. So go to the community plugins, browse data view. And here it is. In my case, it is already installed. So install it from here. Now with the plugin installed, we have to tell Obsidian that we are using the data view in this node. To do that, we'll write three back quotes, then data view, and we'll close that with other three back quotes, okay? And inside here, we have to tell data view what we want. So let's start with a very basic one. Just write list and this will show you all the nodes you have in your Obsidian vault. That's it. It is as simple as that. However, if you watched my last video, you remember that I added another item here that is from, okay? And I can use different things here. For example, if I start with a hashtag, it will show me the list of tags and I can choose one. And again, now I have all the notes in my Obsidian Vault, a list of all the notes that have the ADD Pro tag. And if we hover the mouse here, you can see that this one is inside a folder uh, Evernote and inside that an Apple II. This one here is inside an Apple IIe folder and this one here is inside the YouTube folder. So they are from different folders, meaning that we can add a folder here instead of a tag. So let's do this Apple, whoops, Apple IIe. So now that avail will show us all the nodes inside that folder. And yes, you can combine both. For example, I can write and, and now I can do that again. And now only the two files that combine uh, the folder Apple IIe and the, the tag ADT Pro. Okay, now let's talk about sorting. We can sort our lists ascending or descending. And by the way, you can have multiple lists inside the same node. So let's create a new one here, data view. Let's go back to our list that is from Apple to E, sort. This one is a little weird, but stay with me. Just, just memorize it, okay? File name. File name means that we want the file name to be sorted. Let's say descending. And here we have it in reverse alphabetic order. Let's change that to ascending. And now, whoops. And now it's in alphabetic order. Okay, this one is better with tables, but we are not talking about tables today. So I'm gonna use it to show you the last example of today's video. Uh, that is 
sorting based on a property. So this is a real thing I have in my Obsidian. I have different nodes for each session and each meeting. And I have a property called type where I tell what it is. So for example, session, uh, session, session, and this one meeting. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our lists. Let's delete all this. Start from scratch. Data view. List. From. Now we have to use a slash because I want only the items from the subfolder A. So, clients slash A. If we finish here, you see a list of everything that is inside that folder, but that's not what I want. Now, let's use the where type is equal session. So type is this property here. If we do the same, I'm going to copy this to make our lives easier paste it here, but instead of session, let's change this to meeting. And now we have two lists, sessions and meetings. And if you want to do something like this, you can. So you can close them. And we can make this even better because if you take a look here, it's not alphabetically ordered. So we can make this like we can use sort, remember, file name, ascending. And now we have one, two, three. Or if you want to, you can do the reverse which is what I do because doing this will keep the most recent sessions at the top of the list. And I didn't mention it before, but of course you can also click in any of these links to jump to that note. This is it. If you want more videos like this, basic videos about data view, please let me know in the comments below. If this one was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to help even more, please consider joining my Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or buying me a coffee. Thanks for watching. See you soon.